the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka's central bank has injected around 100 billion rupees against domestic assets through multiple liquidity tools by the 25th of this month. An International Monetary Fund delegation visits the Sri Lanka Customs head office to discuss ways to enhance administration amid concerns over significant revenue leakages in the import-export sectors. On the first trading day of the week, the Colombo Stock Exchange records modest gains, continuing the upward trend from last week. And most Asian stocks rose today as concerns over the Israel-Iran conflict were soothed by a less severe than feared attack by Israel, while Japanese shares rose past increased political uncertainty. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us. According to official data, Sri Lanka's central bank has injected around 100 billion rupees against domestic assets through multiple liquidity tools by the 25th of this month, driving up excess money in the banking system to over 190 billion rupees. The central bank injected 36.16 billion rupees through an overnight auction and 70 billion rupees for seven days through a term auction of printed money. By the 25th of October, excess liquidity deposits in the central bank's standing facility was 193.4 billion rupees, up from 138 billion rupees a month earlier. By offering 40 billion rupees to all comers as low as 8.27%, where only 36 billion rupees were bid, the Monetary Authority prevented over trading market participants from borrowing at its 9.25% standing facility and encouraged them to trade without deposits at even lower rates. In the run up to the election period, where there could have been a drawdown of cash, the central bank acted less imprudently and some banks went to the window and borrowed at 9.25%. Since the central bank was set up in 1950, the agency has restored to various means to print money to miss target rates, triggering forex shortages, monetary instability, social unrest and malnutrition of children. An International Monetary Fund delegation recently visited the Sri Lanka Customs Head Office to discuss ways to enhance administration amid concerns over significant revenue leakages in the import and export sectors. Sri Lanka Customs, one of the three key revenue collection bodies of the government, has already recorded more than 1 trillion rupee revenue so far this year, surpassing last year's record of 975 billion rupees. Sri Lanka has committed with the IMF for a revenue target of 1,534 billion rupees for 2024 from the customs. However, customs officials have raised concerns over facilities and practical issues in raising the revenue. Sivali Arukgada, the customs spokesman, said the IMF technical expert visited the customs on the request of the Director General. He said the IMF expert had meetings with all internal and external stakeholders of the customs, including customs trade union, house agents and Ceylon Chamber of Commerce officials. <laughs> The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce said a delegation from the Sri Lanka Greater Mekong Business Council visited Thailand ahead of a free trade deal coming on stream in January of next year to explore business partnerships and investments. The mission also coincided with the Logimat Southeast Asia and Logi Food Southeast Asia 2024 exhibitions. The delegation comprised 11 business professionals from Sri Lanka representing industries such as pharmaceuticals and healthcare, tourism, agriculture, logistics, distilleries, apparel, gems and jewellery, food and beverages and microfinancing. The delegation participated in B2B meetings facilitated by the Board of Trade of Thailand and the Thai Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce, exploring business development opportunities across various sectors. <laughs> The Indian High Commission in Colombo undertook a ceremonial handing over of solar power systems under a $17 million, 25-megawatt rooftop solar project financed by India. The solar systems were given to Hukandar Temple, Sri Anjayar Temple, St. Anthony's Church and Muthwal Juma Mosque in the Western Province. The events were attended by officials from the Indian High Commission in Sri Lanka, the Ceylon Electricity Board and the Sri Lankan Sustainable Energy Authority. India is giving US$17 million US dollars to install rooftop solar panels to 5,000 religious sites across the country. The Indian High Commission said the project is designed to reduce energy costs for these institutions while bolstering Sri Lanka's transition to clean energy. The project is expected to be completed by early next year. 
effort to strengthen collaboration and updating attendees on recent developments and initiatives under the Maritime Advisory Program, a courtesy visit took place by the Colombo Plan to the Transport, Highways, Ports and Civil Aviation Minister Secretary KDS Ruanchandra and the management of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority. Funded by the U.S. State Department with support from the U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka, the MAP aims to upskill and reskill SLPA officials over a three-year period commencing in 2024. The program will focus on enhancing the technical expertise of SLPA employees, particularly in managing smart ports and adopting modern port management practices. The comprehensive capacity building program will encompass a variety of training methods, including technical exchanges, workshops, conferences and and port study exchange tours. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the first trading day of the week, the Colombo Stock Exchange recorded modest gains continuing the upward trend from last week. The All Share Price Index rose, signaling a steady momentum in the market. And similarly, the S&P SL20 Index also climbed, reflecting positive investor sentiment and confidence in the market's performance. To provide further insights, let's connect with Tarusha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a significant upswing with the All Share Price Index reaching a new milestone by surpassing the, surpassing the 12,600 mark for the first time in two and a half years. As a result, the ASPI Index settled at 12,610, gaining 92 points. In a similar trend, the S&P SL20 Index also climbed higher closing up by 32 points at 3,790. So investor sentiment remained optimistic across the board with notable contributions from LOLC Holdings, Browns Investments, National Development Bank, Sampat Bank and Melstar Corp driving ASPI's increase for the day. Investor participation was robust with turnover recorded at LCAD 4 billion improved retail participation along with active buying from high net worth individuals and institutional investors further boosted turnover particularly through off-board transactions involving Hatta National Bank, Sampath Bank and CIC Holdings. Additionally, the banking, capital goods and material sectors made significant contributions to the today's turnover. Moving on to the top gainers for the day include Siron Printers, UB Finance and Tess Agro. While top losers for the day are Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Serendip Hotels Non-Voting Share and Lotus Hydropower PLC. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a mixed and upward trend last week and started this week with positive momentum as well. We'll look ahead to the next four days now and connecting with us is Demantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings for the market forecast. Thank you. In, the, in line with our anticipation uh, last week, the market has been on a uh, sort of a bullish trend and uh, we think uh, this trend is likely to continue with the uh, low interest rate regime uh, that is uh, prevailing uh, in the country and it's likely that the uh, rates are uh, government security is specifically is likely to further uh, move down uh, as we go along. So uh, the main reason for the uh, low interest rate regime is uh, gradually we are seeing the uncertainty in the system uh, gradually ease off and with it uh, we are seeing a uh, uh, the investor confidence uh, improving and uh, overall we see a positive uh, environment uh, in the uh, over the next uh, two to three months so with it uh, we are seeing gradually uh, investor interest increasing in the market uh, which is creating this uh, bullish trend and we think that trend can uh, continue uh, over the uh, next couple of weeks as well so turnover levels has been uh, significantly high and we think uh, that trend also can uh, continue uh, 
because uh, gradually we will see uh, more and more retail activity come into the market. Sli currently it's slightly less as uh, there is more high net worth and institutional activity which is creating the turnover. However, we think uh, retail activity is also likely to spike uh, significantly with uh, the uh, flow of funds moving towards the uh, equity market uh, with the uh, lower uh, interest rate regime and also uh, we are likely to see uh, positive results uh, coming over the uh, next couple of weeks because this is the uh, results season and corporate earnings is expected to be very good and that is also likely to uh, positively impact the market over the uh, next couple of weeks. Thank you. The Colombo Stock Exchange has become the fourth best performing stock exchange in Asia, just behind China, Taiwan and Pakistan so far during this year. Out of the selected indices of Asian countries, Sri Lanka performed positively hitting the fourth spot of highest index gain. The CSE emphasized that this milestone reflects the strength and growth potential of Sri Lanka's financial market in the global arena. Colombo Bose continued on growth path with the positive news on external debt restructuring front over the past number of weeks as the country moved closer to the expected sovereign credit upgrade. This growth trajectory remains on course even after the presidential election with the new government pledging to prioritise stability. Last Friday, the main index ASPI reached the 12,500 milestone and the market turnover reached 4.88 billion rupees. According to First Capital Research, ASPI could reach a fair value of 13,000 to 14,000 by the end of this year. Gold prices experienced a slight decline today, impacted by a stronger dollar and rising treasury yields. Traders are closely monitoring incoming U.S. economic data for insights into the Federal Reserve's interest rate policies. Spot gold has fallen 0.4% to $2,737.63 per ounce. This decrease comes after bullion reached a record high of $2,758.38 last Wednesday, driven by safe haven demand amid on ongoing geopolitical tensions, including conflicts in the Middle East and Ukraine. Investors are navigating a complex landscape, balancing the allure of gold as a secure investment against shifting monetary policies and economic indicators. The market's focus on upcoming data could significantly influence gold's trajectory in the days ahead. Oil prices fell sharply in early Asian trade today, weighed by easing fears of a Middle East war after an Israeli strike against Iran over the weekend was less severe than feared. Brent oil futures expiring in December fell 4.1% to $72.97 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures fell 4.2% to $68.76 a barrel. Both contracts were close to their weakest levels since early October. The strike saw traders price out a risk premium from crude prices and put focus back squarely on demand, which is expected to weaken in the coming months. Israel launched a strike against several Iranian military sites on Saturday but avoided the country's major oil production and nuclear facilities. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to last week. This is according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate for the US dollar has decreased along with the selling rate. Now let's take a look at the Sri Lankan rupee and how it's faring against other global currencies. break now this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report 
Sri Lanka's wind force has successfully commissioned a 366 kilowatt peak rooftop solar PV power project at Cocoon Islands in the Maldives, marking a significant step towards renewable energy initiatives for the region. Windforce PLC has officially entered into an exciting agreement with Cocoon Investment Private Limited for the engineering design, procurement and commissioning of a 366 kilowatt power rooftop solar PV project at Cocoon Island, Maldives. This partnership signed on the 20th of October marks a significant step towards harnessing sustainable solar energy. The initiative aims to significantly reduce the resort's carbon footprint, promoting environmental sustainability while enhancing the guest experience. With the projected timeline of just six months, the project is set to cost $296,372. CEO Mark Moffat announced that IFS, a global player in enterprise cloud and industrial AI software, will invest $1 billion in Sri Lanka by year end, reaffirming the country's commitment to the region's growth and innovation. This investment is a result of a nearly three decades of successive investments and salaries. CEO Moffat highlighted that this growth is not only significant but also accelerating, showcasing the vital role Sri Lanka plays in IFS's global operations and strategy. Moffat described the Sri Lankan operations as the company's engine room, expressing deep pride in the contributions made by the talented team there. He acknowledged their critical impact on IFS's success and expansion plans. In a further demonstration of commitment to the region, IFS announced plans in June to establish a new facility in Colombo Boat City, which will create 1,000 jobs. In a significant development for the Sri Lankan market, Mercantile Investments and Finance PLC and Diesel and Motor Engineering PLC have signed a Memorandum of Understanding to establish a strategic partnership. This collaboration introduces the Mercantile Investments and Finance PLC Demo Lease Promotion, an innovative financial solution designed to provide attractive leasing options for customers purchasing Tata commercial vehicles from Demo. By combining Demo's expertise in vehicle distribution with Mercantile investments, reputable financial services, this partnership aims to enhance financial accessibility and expand market reach. The initiative promises substantial benefits for customers, making it easier for them to acquire Tata commercial vehicles while enjoying flexible leasing solutions. Casio Computer Co. Limited has strengthened its commitment to brand integrity by taking action against counterfeit calculators in Sri Lanka following its successful crackdown on counterfeit watches. This initiative is a part of Casio Group's IP enforcement policy designed to combat the growing issue of counterfeit products in Sri Lanka and protect valued customers. In collaboration with local law firm and the Colombo Crime Division, Casio conducted a successful raid on leading wholesaler and importer of stationary goods in Colombo. This coordinated operation resulted in the seizure of significant quantity of counterfeit calculators, which were imitations of Casio's authentic models. This notable seizure underscores Casio's strong commitment to tackling the pervasive problem of counterfeit goods, which not only jeopardizes the company's reputation, but also poses serious risk to students relying on accurate calculators. <laughs> Mr. Sahra Anmusin, the chairman of Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC and managing director and CEO Mr. Sanat Manatunga, recently met with Dr. Asan H. Mansur, the governor of Bangladesh Bank and Mr. Ahmed Munawar, governor of the Maldives Monetary Authority during the IMF and World Bank Group annual meetings in Washington. The discussions focused on various topics of mutual interest, including the bank's operations and commitment in Bangladesh and the Maldives. Since entering Bangladesh in November of 2003, through the acquisition of Credit Agricole Indosuez, Commercial Bank has expanded to 20 outlets, comprising 11 branches, two offshore banking units, six SME centers, and a booth at the U.S. Embassy. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today as concerns over the Israel-Iran conflict were soothed by a less severe than feared attack by Israel, while Japanese shares rose past increased political uncertainty. Japanese markets were the best performers today as the ruling Liberal Democratic Party lost its parliamentary majority, with investors betting that heightened political uncertainty will diminish the chances of more interest rate hikes by the Bank of Japan. Israel attacked Iran over the weekend but avoided hitting Tehran's oil and nuclear infrastructure, marking a less severe escalation in the long-running conflict. Most Asian markets rose on this notion while oil prices slumped. Apple's iPhone sales in China slightly slipped while rival Huawei posted a 42% surge in the third quarter of this year as competition intensifies in the world's largest smartphone market. Apple's iPhone sales in China slipped 0.3% in the third quarter, while rival Huawei posted a 42% sales surge. That's as competition intensifies in the world's largest smartphone market. Vivo, which primarily sells budget phones, was the top vendor. Apple came in second with 15.6% of the market share, while Huawei came in third, fractionally behind on market share. The contrast in sales performance follows Huawei's comeback last year in the premium segment with its Mate 60 series. It features what analysts said is a breakthrough domestically produced chip using advanced technology. And earlier in the year, the firm challenged Apple's position with its Pura 70 model. Apple has faced additional headwinds in China, including restrictions on iPhone use by some government agencies. The US tech giant responded with multiple discount campaigns to boost sales. The third quarter performance was partly helped by the new iPhone 16, which went on sale last month. On the same day, Huawei launched a competing product, a tri-foldable phone. This ongoing sales battle comes at a time when China's domestic products are booming in some industries, like electric vehicles, which can be made cheaply and are providing fierce competition for European and US rivals. But the newest iPhones got off to a strong start in China, with sales 20% higher in the first three weeks since launch, compared with the 2023 models. Showing the competition certainly isn't a foregone conclusion. Mercedes-Benz will step up cost cuts after earnings halved in the third quarter, hit by tepid demand and fierce competition in China. Mercedes-Benz reported on Friday a 64% plunge in third quarter car earnings, massively missing analysts' expectations. The German premium automaker felt the effects as Chinese consumers continue to cut back on luxury goods in a weakening economy. Reflecting on the Q3 results, CFO Harold Wilhelm said that the group will step up cost cuts. Mercedes said the period's earnings were hit by a tough market as well as model revamp costs, especially for new versions of the G-Class SUV, which will roll out in the next quarter. The luxury carmaker cut its full-year profit margin target twice during the third quarter. The result's rare bright spot was the continued cash flow generation from the industrial business, up 2% year on year. Mercedes joins a growing number of European rivals blaming a weakening Chinese car market for falling profits and margins. It comes as talks between Brussels and Beijing continue over looming tariffs on imports of Chinese EVs into Europe. It's a major headache for European car makers who depend heavily on exports to China like Mercedes, due to fears of potential retaliation. That's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.